What's going on? Today's video is I spent $400,000 so I could say that black folks were nothing. This was one of the well-constructed comments in the consequence section. It was like, there are people who are tired of me saying what I say about black folks. And it is pretty interesting because the only things I'm sharing to you are my experiences. So this is something from the peanut gallery. Once again, shout out to all of the progressive, positive, intellectual, nerdy, black folks who are watching this channel and leaving these beautiful, well-constructed comments. Thank you, I really appreciate that. So why do the people in the peanut gallery watch this channel? Because I was giving that some thought today. I was just sitting there like, they don't like what I say. And I've had comments like, you're full of self-hate, you are a Republican, you're all these things that I'm not. And I was like, why do these people continue to watch this channel? Because I've been talking about not using the N-word since I started this YouTube channel. And I knew that wasn't going to be really popular. And once again, it, it, there, there are people who like, I disagree with you that the predominant black culture, there's more progressive, nerdy black folks. And I will wholeheartedly disagree with you because over the years, I have seen comments from people who were ostracized, attacked, and mocked by other black people because they spoke correctly, they didn't have these hood sensibilities, they didn't have these ghetto attributes, and these people were mocked, harmed, and um, hazed. Hazed for a lack of a better way, they were just treated very harshly and poorly by the predominant black culture. And I'm like, you can say it, you can click your heels together like you're Dorothy and the wonderful Wizard of Oz. And you're not going to change my opinion that the predominant black culture is corrosive. I was on YouTube and there's a song called My Ends. This video has 350 million views. The song was created eight years ago. And that's the whole song. My end, my end, my end, my end. That, there are not that many other words in this song. Not that many words in this song. And I, I was just sitting there and I was sitting there and I was thinking because, you know, since now the progressive black people have a platform that they can share their opinions, I kind of begin to understand why the worthless people, why the demo people, why the trash black folks don't like it. Because what's gonna happen is, as more progressive black people stand up, they're gonna start calling these folks out. And here's the thing. I was looking at, you know, the car rental business. Um, once again, YouTube is not the source for accurate information because when I started the car rental business, I had no clue that these things were gonna happen. I had no clue that someone was gonna rent my Porsche and then sell it on Craigslist. This stuff never occurred to me. So for someone to say that I spent $400,000 so I could say black folks were nothing, because you know it was like, you maybe on the subconscious level, look, bruh, sis, if you don't like me articulating my personal experience with the predominant black culture, turn off the channel. Go somewhere else. Don't watch. Because I, I have a reason why you guys are hanging around here. Like the progressive black folks are like, man, thank you. I've been thinking this way. I've been feeling this way for years. I've been thinking this way for years. I see it in the comments every, every day. Why the progressive black folks watch is I'm speaking to them. I'm speaking to them. Literally since December, 35,000 new black progressive folks have signed up to this channel. There is a big audience of folks who are like, 
I am sick of the trash people. I am sick of the dysfunction. I am sick of the bad behavior. I am sick of the criminality. I am sick of it. I'm sick and tired of it. I am sick and tired of these people representing me. And once again, Google some videos of Africans saying my ends. We have exported that dysfunction, that toxicity around the world. What are black folks known for? Dancing, rapping, throwing that ball. That's what we're known for. We're not known for building the pyramid pyramids. Black folks built the damn pyramids. Egypt is in Africa. It was black folks who built the damn pyramids. We're not known for that. We're not known for the math and the technology and all of the advanced stuff that happened eons ago. We're not known for that. We're known for foolishness. We're known for criminality. We're known for single motherhood. That's what we're known for. And the progressive black folks who do not exhibit that behavior are tired of being affixed with the nomenclature of hood personality types. Because like when I saw that comment that I have a subconscious hate of black folks, I feel that I'm fairly articulate and I've not said ever on one video that I hate black folks. I hate the bad behavior. I hate the fact that I had 18 black folks arrested for stealing my cars because these folks didn't have the common decency to bring my car back after they weren't paying for it. This is what I relate to you and this is what the progressive black people love. I relate to you real life experiences. I'm not making this stuff up. I was literally forced out of the car rental business. Number one reason I got the car business was attrition. I lost 14 cars in eight months. I mean, that's, that's, that's almost two cars per month. That's really, really high because here's the thing with the trash people. And I have seen it up close and I've seen it personal. Uh, there is a strong correlation between poverty and filth. I have seen it. I have got my cars back that were so messed up, that were so trashed that I didn't even want to take them to the car wash. People feel that it is perfectly acceptable to drive a dirty, filthy car because that's how they live. This is how they live. Someone left this comment and I feel that it was very accurate that someone was really properties and he would follow people out and look at their car. And if their car was trash, he wouldn't rent to them because he knew they would do that to his property. I have seen like when I got the BMW X5 back, I actually did videos of it because I was so shocked at how trash the car was. And one of the things that trash people cannot do is maintain decent things. They can't do it. They can't do it. And I've had a lot of people with conjecture and I'm going to say it. And I actually put the video on uh, hustlers Kung Fu. You could not put luxury cars on the hire car because you don't have the money. Let's stop pretending like, well, you only have four cars on hire car because it's optional and you've got all this money. You, you, you don't have the money. You don't have the money. So let's stop pretending like you got some money and stop and like once again to all of my hardworking entrepreneurs who are making the best of what they can do. I'm not talking to you. I am talking to you, these people who feel who feel that they're smarter than me, but there is no evidence. There's no physical evidence. There's no practical evidence there's, of that being true. They say it because they are hood trash people that like, yeah, he failed because I don't like him. So he failed and they're like cheering and they're cheering and they're cheering.
right? Now, I'm about to say something. How many of you could take a $400,000 loss and it doesn't impact your life one way or another? If you were watching, and this is what's so funny, I documented the whole process in the Kill Switch Chronicles. And I actually went through the whole process. I was like, I'm gonna stop buying cars at 30 cars because I wanna get marketplace data. That's actually in the video. And these worthless trash demo people are, cause see, they're used to chaos. They're used to chaos. They're used to dysfunction. They're used to it. So it's like, yeah, he failed. And I even saw some simp talk about all these folks with money. Translation, I don't have any money or you know and I, i'll continue to be successful now once again to my hard-working entrepreneurs who are just starting out who don't have money i am not talking to you because you guys are busy working on your businesses you're doing what you can to grow and you're not throwing all this shade i am talking to trash nation all right hear me and hear me well your ideal of success and my ideal of success are vastly different. I personally, at where I'm at in my life, don't feel that $25,000 a month for a car rental business is successful. I don't feel that's successful. I have other businesses that make way more money with less investment, so I, I look at that, because once I got the data, and I was just sitting there like, man, I am sick of these people. And I'm gonna tell you, I have a record of closing down businesses because I don't like the customers. If we will go back in time, if you care to search, because there's a lot of videos to go through, uh, you would have to go back to about 2014. I shut down the resale business because I didn't like those motherfuckers. They were needy, they were cheap, they were jealous, literally. I had white dudes who had a four hour hangout about me because I actually had a storage auction book. I was selling the book, I was making money, and I was teaching classes. And they felt that I should have contributed to the community for free. And I was like, I got so fed up that I was about to quit YouTube because they were on me. They were making videos. They were making alternative channels to mess with the people who were supporting me. It got stupid. I actually sued people to get them off me, to get them up off me. I actually had to file lawsuits. And one dude's wife called me crying, like, please don't sue us, we don't have anything. I was like, your monkey ass husband needs to stop making videos about me. And you know, this is what this woman said, she says, if you make another video about this man, I am divorcing you. And that, that when I started filing lawsuits and, you know, and they did, they did one last hangout and he's like, yeah, he's suing me. He's suing me. And uh, my attorney says I will lose. That's when it stopped. That's when it stopped. I had to take it to that level to get these folks off of me because here's the thing to the peanut gallery. The uh, things that I articulate, the experiences I share are my real life experiences. I'm not making this up. I wish I was making it up. I wish I was making up. Like today, I, like I'm, I'm waiting. Uh, also, James, hire car does pay for stolen vehicles. Uh, they're doing it because this is the process. I had to sign an affidavit, had to have it notarized. I had to mail it back in and they're doing the valuation of the car and they're going to cut me a check. So I actually had a black woman, single mother with four kids. How do I know this? She told me I'm a single mother with four kids and I don't have time to be doing this stuff with you. And oh yeah, I had to buy a tire for that Range Rover. I kept hearing about that tire. This woman, because she wasn't paying me and I cut the vehicle off, she got mad, she got vindictive and she did something with this Range Rover. I'm like, I am out. I'm tired of dealing with that behavior. I'm tired of dealing with trash attributes. So you're not paying me 
You know, I, we have a contract. I provide you a vehicle that's serviceable that you can drive and you pay me. She breached the contract. And then because I actually had a way to get around it, she got mad and she did something with the vehicle. She actually did something with the vehicle. And this Range Rover wasn't stolen once. It wasn't stolen twice. It was stolen four times. And part of the issue is, and this is something that happened because when I started the car rental business, I was uh, renting cars out of my house. Big mistake. These black folks have never seen a successful black person living like that. Living in the big ass house, driving the BMW, driving the Porsche. They've never actually seen that in real, because like the, the guys who tried to scam me on the X5, he was like, nice Porsche. They be noticing, they be, they be watching your pockets. They be watching your pockets. And every time I dealt with a trash or demo or worthless person that realized that I had a certain level of influence, this is when the fuckery begins. Because once again, this is why I'm not showing any more receipts. I'm not posting anything up because I'm just making myself a target. You know, I realized that as I'm going in because I felt once again, because I was ignorant, ignorant that by, you know, providing receipts and showing you guys that I could back up what I say would be helpful. What I have found out that has been a hindrance in my forward progression because trash people are jealous and they're haters. Like this guy who tried to scam me and said the car needed catalytic converters and didn't need catalytic converters. He and his wife tried to scam me because I was driving the red Porsche. I was doing significantly better than them. And I don't like tell people that I'm renting cars out my personal business. I don't even bring that up. It's like you rent the car. I, and that, I was so glad to get that office complex for them to pick up the cars. I do not tell people what's going on. But people are real quick because the number of cars that I shut off, because I should have tracked that, over half of them figured out that I cut the car off and this is when the games begin. This is when the fuckery began. This is when people started keeping keys. I had one guy, he said, I'll give you the key back if you pay me for that tire I had to replace. This is what this person said to me. And I said, you ran over something, you blew the tire, you had to replace it. He said, I'll give you the key back if you give me that 270 back. He felt he was in a position to negotiate. You know what I did? I, I got a tow truck driver that I can just tell what the car is, he go get some. And I told him where the car was, he picked it up and I had my key guy make a key and then I cussed this fool out. I said, you are a worthless person. You were late and you wanted to hold the key hostage because you felt, because see, the, the tire thing, and th this is a really sensitive subject to me. I had so many people who would run over something, damage tires, and want me to pay for their damage. Like, you know, once again, these trash people, and it, it, it was a big thing, because I had this one girl, she's like, she flattened two tires, and she's like, yeah, you need to fix the car. I said, no, you need to fix the car. If I have to have that car towed and fixed, I am not renting to you anymore. And she's like, but I need a car. I was like, you need to fix those flat tires. And guess what she did? She pulled the money out her ass and she got those tires fixed and she rented that car for two months. I started talking rough and reckless to these people because I was just sitting there like, the lack of responsibility. And this is the big issue. Like I used to be married and guess what? I got married before I had kids. And once again, my ex-wife, and I've said this, you could be a progressive black person, but you could be married to a non-progressive black person. My ex-wife was a hood rat, which I didn't realize this until a long, long time ago. Cause one day I was walking around Sandy Springs and it hit me, it's like, oh my God, she's a hood rat. This is why, my ex-wife would not work with me. I'm gonna tell you a story, and I don't think I've ever told this story here on YouTube. I had just got out of the military, and I was working in the hospital, and I signed up for ITT Tech, because I felt that tech was gonna be the future, and I was right. 
And what I did was set my work schedule up where I can work Baylor. And Baylor is where you get paid for 40 hours, but you work less than 40 hours because you're working every weekend, right? And I set this up so I could go to ITT Tech. And she had a job. And guess what she did a week after I set all this up? And I communicated to her, she quit her job. She just walked out her job and just put it all on me. This is what I'm talking about. She never, ever worked with me. Now she would work against me in a heartbeat because she was a demo person. She was a worthless person. At this point in time, she is homeless. She is 50 some years old and homeless. And it is not a surprise because of her behavior. And once again, for all of you folks who feel that you, you, I see these comments. Oh, you're talking bad about black people talking that like, I'm not talking bad about black folks. I'm talking bad about you. That's where the issue comes in because you're realizing certain proclivities, certain habits, certain attributes that you yourself possess. And to hear me on the YouTubes articulate that, it makes you feel some kind of way because I'm talking about you. And you, and here's the thing, the trash black people, the ghetto black people know that they are living foul. They inherently know that the way that they're living isn't the best way, but they're caught up in this ghetto fabulous situation. Because once again, I mentioned this before, I mentioned again, what do we have that compares to the Cosby show, rock, living single, and um, that the show that was uh, the college show where they went to Stillman. I forget the name of that show with uh, Dwayne and uh, Whitley. I forget the name, but what shows do we have today that are comparable to those shows? I looked, we have none. We have, and once again, why do we have all of these ghetto fabulous trash shows? Because that is the predominant black culture. You cannot convince me that it's not because this is why we have all these shows. This is why we have these situations. Because I was like, I've literally had this conversation with many of my black friends. Like I don't use the N word. And it, it's a conversation because it's like, hey man, that's who we are. I'm like, no, they ain't who we are. We built the pyramids. There wasn't no damn niggas building the fucking pyramids. It was smart, articulate, educated black folks. Wasn't no niggas building the fucking pyramids. See, I feel that anyone that likes to use that word is filled with self-loathing and a form of self-hate. And they are the minstrels, because back in the, the 20s, there was a thing called blackface. And these were the minstrels. These are the minstrels of today. These are the caricatures of real noble black folks. So if you come to this channel and you feel in some kind of way and you feel <laughs> hey, they're talking bad about black folks. <laughs> I'm talking bad about your monkey ass. That's the problem. A hit dog will holler. Because that's what the issue is. And I'm going to keep talking rough and reckless like this because there's an audience of progressive, beautiful, wonderful, intelligent, nerdy black folks who are sick of you trash black folks. We sick of y'all. We are sick of y'all. Cause you make the whole community look bad. And if I have anything to do with it, I'm going to make it a better community because I met this woman who had a peculiar way of speaking from North Carolina. And we had a conversation, she was really attractive. And we started talking and we started talking about our childhood. And she came from, both her parents were professionals, both her parents were college professors. So she came from an upper middle class black family. And she said that she was mocked, she was teased, she was hazed, simply because of the way that she spoke. Just simply because of the way that she spoke. And it wasn't white people, it wasn't Asian people, it wasn't Hispanic people, it was black people doing this shit. So, you know, spare me all of these comments like, you talking bad about black folks. No, I'm talking bad about you. <laughs> That's the issue because you feel identified, you feel targeted and good. 
because I'm making you think because the way that you living ain't right. It ain't right. So go ahead because with the trash nation, we're having a a renaissance. There's gonna be another renaissance. If you remember the Harlem Renaissance, this beautiful period of music, jazz, and poetry that was created by beautiful, intelligent, wonderful black folks. We're, we're, we're about to have another renaissance, the nerdy black people renaissance, because white nerds have taken over the world. White nerd, Bill Gates, nerd. Elon Musk, nerd. But because they're money, they're not called nerds. They're just called wealthy guys. Elon Musk is a nerd. Bill Gates is a nerd. Jeff Bezos is a nerd. And the nerds are taking over the world and the nerdy, intelligent black folks are gonna take over the world. They're gonna start a new revolution. We're gonna start making moves. We're gonna start creating things. We're gonna start building businesses. And we're gonna change the image and complexion of the culture. Because there's so many of you out there who are comfortable being a hood baby. You are comfortable being less than. You're comfortable walking around calling yourself the N-word because you have no hope, you have no appreciation, you don't have any ideal of what the future holds. And like I said, I was raised by an educated black woman, my grandmother. My grandmother had a degree, which was very, very rare very very rare for the time period so that's who raised me and the tender years the tender years doctrine between zero and 12 i had a full-time parent i never went to daycare i never was in some i had someone i had to stay at home parent and that's something a lot of you angry black folks don't understand because when i look back and i see the importance because Uh, Going forward, if I get married and we have more kids, my wife will be a stay-at-home wife. She will not work. Her job will be mommy because I know how important that is. But when I talk about these values and stuff to hood, trash people, they're like, nah, man, I need to find me a chick so we can do this struggle love, man. So, you know, she put my check with her check and we can build together. Real men don't build with women. Real men build on their own and they support, provide and protect for their women. That's what real men do. Not this stuff that I see in ghetto fabulous world. Because man, Atlanta, I'm probably gonna do a whole video on how Atlanta used to be and what Atlanta has become. Because when I saw that comment that I spent $400,000 so I could say black folk, I'm just sitting there like, like when I got in the car rental business, I didn't know who my customers were going to be. I had no clue. The, the whole gist of this was to provide context to put myself in the position of what my students were. Because many of them are starting businesses that they don't really know nothing about. And it was really good for me as an educator. Because now I'm like, now I'm like, oh, okay, this is what they're going through. So I can relate to my students better. I can be a better educator. I can actually, and it opened my mind because I, all my businesses have been online. And I, this is the first, and this was an online business. And one of the things I learned that when you deal with the public, like, you know, I had businesses dealing with the public before, but I've never had uh, situations like this before. Never, never happened. So once again, I'm going to be a better better educator. I'm going to keep talking this stuff. So if you are a trash black person, um, be aware that you come to the Institute of Economic Thought, you're going to hear bad stuff about your kind. That's what you're going to hear. Because I am, for one, sick and tired of you. I am sick and tired of you representing me and casting this image because I am a nerdy black man and I am proud to be a nerd. I am proud to be an intellectual. I am proud to be smart. I'm proud of that. So if you are one of my cohorts, one of my progressive, intellectually nerdy black folks, salute. I appreciate you. 
know that you are loved here.